everyone, Xeon over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of Bayonetta Origins Cereza and the Lost Demon on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by PJ O'Reilly for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. If you happen to read our early preview of Bayonetta Origins, you'll know that after the first five chapters of the game, we were pretty excited to continue our adventures through this bewitching spin-off from the Bayonetta series. We were impressed with its mix of gameplay mechanics and the enchanting atmosphere of the whole thing. It seemed to be building up to this magical journey through a forbidden forest with plenty of well-designed puzzles and battles that would build on what we'd already seen. However, the game never really manages to take off as we'd hoped. While certainly entertaining and endearing, we were left with an experience that feels like a little bit of a missed opportunity, especially given how much it manages to get right in terms of its overall style and tone. Bayonetta Origins introduces us to a young Cereza, a forbidden child of a Lumen Sage and Umbra Witch, who desperately wants to become as powerful as possible so she can rescue her mother from the prison she's been placed in due to an outlawed love affair. After a dream sequence in which a mysterious boy tells Cereza that the power she seeks lies deep within the Avalon Forest, the young witch takes off into the night, ditching her stern mentor Morgana, and immediately finds herself in all sorts of trouble. After a somewhat failed attempt to summon an infernal demon to protect herself against the forest's mischievous fairies, Cereza manages to send a demon into the body of her stuffed plushie, Cheshire. With both the young witch and the stuffed cat available to you, you utilize a twin stick system that allows you to control both Cereza and Cheshire at the same time. Further to this, Cheshire can be switched between unleashed mode, where he can stomp around and destroy enemies and barriers, and then can flip back to hug mode, where he shrinks down to toy form to replenish energy, also allowing Cereza to use him to smack enemies, jump across small gaps, or throw him onto unreachable platforms. Utilizing these various methods of traversal, early sections of the game dish out gentle environmental puzzles that require you to make use of Cheshire's dual forms and your ability to direct both protagonists separately to move forward. There are a few other twists thrown in here. Demons apparently hate Rosemary, so Cheshire can't go near areas with the plant, and you can't have the pair separated by a large distance for very long, as indicated by a little gauge that pops up whenever you wander too too far away from each other. In terms of combat, the R-rated combo-heavy action of the Bayonetta series proper has been replaced by a much more simplistic and easygoing system. Initially, Cereza is able to use her magic to bind foes in thorns, while Cheshire mauls them with his massive claws. As you progress, you discover that Cereza needs to find and destroy four elemental cores, and each of these will imbue Cheshire with a new elemental form. The wood form, for example, allows him to latch onto various levers and hooks using a leafy whip that extends from his body, but he can also grab enemy shields, rip them off, and then fling them back in their direction. Once you've unlocked a few elemental forms, combat spices up by introducing enemies who have various elemental barriers, which can be shattered by a corresponding elemental attack. This adds a little more rhythm and strategy to proceedings beyond just binding up foes and battering them. There's a fairly impressive range of fairy foes thrown into the mix as well, with rocket firing types, shielded tanks, drillers who burrow under stages, as well as a selection of bigger mini bosses who can warp around areas, use fire, ice, and other elemental attacks to cause you problems. As you progress, you'll unlock more moves for both Cereza and Cheshire via skill trees that enable you to bind multiple foes, dodge, and use charged blows and finishers on downed enemies. The culmination of both combat and puzzle aspects here comes in the form of the game's Tier Ninag sections. These are mini dungeons that charge you with taking part in a battle and then solving a short environmental conundrum, and completing them unlocks a chest full of goodies before you can escape. Tier Ninogs are designed to take everything you've learned previously and test your abilities to ensure you've got a handle on how to dispatch foes and solve any puzzle that stands in your way. 
As we mentioned back in our preview, all of this stuff is beyond what we expected to find in a family-friendly spin-off at first glance, especially given its delightful storybook stylings. Initially, it seemed as though it would focus more on narrative than combat or puzzle elements, but there's a surprising number of gameplay mechanics in the mix here. If the game had continued to up the ante and explore them to their fullest extent, we could have been looking at a top-notch origin adventure for young Bayonetta. It's just a shame that in the second half of this roughly 10-hour adventure, things sort of grind to a standstill in terms of experimentation. Cereza and the Lost Demon is quite compelling for the first four or five hours. It reaches a point where it seems happy to sit back and tell the rest of its tale, while the combat and puzzling begin to suffer from repetition. Later areas fail to introduce enough new tricks to keep things involved all the way along. You'll deal with the same handful of puzzle types, moving platforms, and so on, and the combat, while still fun, reaches a point where every battle begins to feel overly familiar. There's also a sense that most fights can be blasted through without much thought beyond the odd elemental switch up to take down a shield. And there's also a slight issue with the dual controls becoming a bit of a hindrance at times during fairy fights, especially when multiple enemies appear and it gets to be a bit harder to tell where your characters are on the field. Now, to be fair to Platinum Games, the game still manages to come up with a few bombastic boss battles. There are also some surprises towards the end of the game that mix things up and see you indulge in sections that have you flee from foes as you dodge incoming projectiles. But the early promise just isn't fully delivered upon in terms of both combat and environmental puzzles. We expected the Tirna Nogs to become fairly challenging by the time we reached the game's end, but they never felt that much harder. And what we experienced in the first few dungeons is too similar to what we faced in the later stages. Perhaps we were just expecting too much of a challenge from Bayonetta Origins. After all, this is a family-friendly, T-rated escapade that does away with the crazy tough action of the main franchise in favor of a much more laid-back affair. But then this feeds into our other main problem with the game. Who exactly is Bayonetta Origins for? It feels mostly aimed at kids in terms of difficulty and the contents of its narrative, but kids aren't long-term Bayonetta fans, and beyond a few nods and links to the adult Bayonetta, well, it's hard to know what those same hardcore hack and slash fans will really get from this. Now, taken as its own thing entirely, this is a well-designed and graphically stunning adventure that tells a fine fairy tale while providing just enough challenge to keep younger or more casual players entertained. In fact, it's one of the better kid-friendly games we've played in quite some time, with production standards well above most of what we find in titles aimed at this demographic. There's some fantastic Nier Automata-esque dynamic camera work, with lots of slick depth of field effects that really draw you into the Forbidden Forest setting. The voice acting is strong, and the soundtrack and artwork are all absolutely stellar. There are plenty of accessibility options too, with the ability to turn off damage and set other aspects of the combat and puzzling so that you can just wander through the story unchallenged if you prefer. If you're looking for a colorful adventure for your kids to dig into, we heartily recommend what's on offer here. However, there's absolutely no doubt that core Bayonetta fans will also be looking to get involved to see how this origin tale fuses with the series proper. And for those players, it's a more difficult recommendation. Bayonetta Origins Cereza and the Lost Demon introduces plenty of fun mechanics. It's got an engaging narrative, and there are plenty of collectibles to beef up the run. There's also a hard mode and a few other things to unlock once you're done with your initial playthrough. But the fact remains that in terms of overall challenge and how its gameplay mechanics evolve as the adventure unfolds, Bayonetta fans may be left wanting. Bayonetta Origins Cereza and the Lost Demon is a delightfully stylish origin tale that sees young Bayonetta take her first steps on the road to becoming the true Umbra Witch we all know and love. This is a graphically stunning fairy tale with plenty in the way of atmosphere and charm. However, longtime Bayonetta fans beware. It's also a game that's aimed squarely at a young, casual audience, introducing plenty of fun puzzle and combat mechanics, but never really evolving them to a point where they become challenging. 
Repetition creeps in later in the game, and although it ends with some stylish boss sequences and some nice shoutouts to the main series, it feels like a little challenge, inventiveness, puzzle and combat experimentation could have made this one absolutely essential for all ages. We here at Nintendo Life give Bayonetta Origins Cereza and the Lost Demon on the Nintendo Switch a 7 out of 10. If you'd like to check out our full written review, you can find that along with more news and information on Bayonetta Origins and the rest of the Bayonetta series over at NintendoLife.com. Or if you'd like to stick around for a little bit longer, my name is Zeon and I've been playing Bayonetta Origins along with PJ. And I have a few thoughts of my own that I wanted to throw at you if you still have a moment. So originally when Bayonetta Origins was shown off at the Game Awards in 2022, I was there in person and I thought it was really cool that a new Bayonetta game was coming off, a spin-off even. It looked beautiful and the game really is. The overall watercolor style of this game is beautiful, unlike anything else. But the original reveal of the game didn't have me very excited for it. I was happy that Bayonetta fans were getting something new and that Nintendo was trying something different, but before I actually got my hands on this game, I didn't really care. But now that I've made it to the halfway point of the game, I would say, and don't worry, PJ's finished the game, I can now say that I'm really happy this game exists. In recent years, Nintendo has been pretty safe with their releases. We've gotten some interesting titles like the Famicom Detective Club series, we got a brand new WarioWare game, Metroid Dread, but last year, besides Live Alive, Kirby finally taking the leap into 3D and being pretty great, and Pokemon Legends also being a fun time, it was a pretty safe year. And while I know this game was developed by Platinum Games, this feels like weird Nintendo to its core. This feels like the kind of game that would only exist on the GameCube or the Nintendo Wii, but no, it's here on the Switch. And yes, it does have the Bayonetta coat of paint, but personally, I haven't played many Bayonetta games myself. I've made it halfway through the first one. I played a decent bit of three, but I don't think that's really hindered my experience here. In fact, it almost has me more excited to pick up that copy of Bayonetta 1 on my shelf and finally play through it and then push myself to play two in three. And even for all the sadness that Cereza has to fight in this game, the back and forth between Cereza and Cheshire is so fun and endearing. It's really special. Don't go into Bayonetta Origins expecting this to be game of the year material. Maybe it will be for you. And even if it isn't, you'll still find something magical and whimsical here. But I absolutely agree with PJ that the game has some pretty repetitive moments and the combat wasn't as exciting as I would have hoped from Platinum Games. It can get a little sloppy at times, and it's really not that difficult either once you get the hang of it. But don't just take my word for it either, there's actually a demo available on the eShop that you can download right now and play the game for yourself. So of course, let us know in the comments down below if you've already played the Bayonetta Origins demo, maybe you have the game pre-ordered, I have no idea. Let us know! And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, then why don't you bring that subscribe button to life? Why don't you animate it by summoning a demon? And then ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we put up a new video. Thank you all so much for watching, and thank you to PJ for spending a boatload of time with Bayonetta Origins, Cereza and the Lost Demon. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, stay safe out there, and we will see you all next time.